hour and then be done. Uh, we greatly appreciate it. Amen. I guess Pastor left. Okay. <laughs> Amen. I Amen. No board. No board this morning. You're just going to have to listen to me preach. Glory to God. Now, I want, you, uh, I want you to begin to exercise. Don't worry about the children doesn't bother me, okay? And uh, it's the adults that I'm concerned with. <laughs> okay? Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. And sis, if you want them to go to class or nursery, that's fine. If you want them to stay with you, that's fine. Not a problem. We just want you to know we have it. Somebody should have approached you uh, to do so. All right. Praise the Lord. All right. Very good. Now, um, what year is it? 2019. There's been some tremendous things happening in 2019. Huh? But 2020 is coming. And the Lord is already preparing his people. God always prepares his people. Because his people are going to make the difference concerning anything that come, whether it's judgment or revival. His people are going to make the difference. He's going to use his people. And I hope this morning that all of you are found and have made a decision in your life to serve the Lord Jesus. Amen. Amen. It matters. And it's going to matter even more in days ahead. So I want you to understand that we're not ministering to you just to have church. This is for your life. This is for you to take on. This is for you to walk in. It's not for you just to listen. It's for you to take on and it's for you to do. We've been ministering along the lines uh, and, and really, truly, and honestly, where we're going, uh, we've already started headed that direction, being a disciple and discipleship. It means finding out what a disciple really is and, and being that, that those words are not popular in our churches here in the United States, but it's a real thing. It is... It is New Testament uh, doctrine uh, uh, that Jesus talks about disciples. Disciples. He says and he gives, he gives uh, certain criteria, and we're going to minister to that in the future, and a lot of the ministers here are going to minister from the platform of counting the cost, paying the price concerning a disciple. A disciple. The Lord is serious about your commitment to him. I hope you are serious about his commitment to you. And you're going to have to catch that back on tape because I don't think I can say that again. <laughs> Amen. We have been dealing with uh, the story of Goliath, David and Goliath, and, and dealing with it from this uh, premise of righteousness, a disciple of the Lord Jesus Christ, according to 2 uh, Corinthians chapter 5, verse 21, where the Bible says that uh, the Lord has put to our account God, we are God, the righteousness of God in Christ. That's what the Word of God says. And so David, even in dealing with Goliath, stood in that position and place of righteousness. Say with me, I am, I am the, righteousness the righteousness of God, of God in, Christ. in Christ. See, that's what you are. That's something that you have to accept. It should be easy for you to accept because it's a gift. The difficulty is walking in it. 
because you have to apply this to your life. And that means you have to apply it to your thinking, your everyday living. You are the righteousness of God in Christ. He has given you right standing with him. Why did he do that? Because you committed your life to the Lord Jesus Christ. And you have made a decision that I want to be a disciple of Christ. That's a serious commitment. And he takes it serious. You ought to take it serious. You ought not to just flip and flaunt, et cetera, going and coming. You ought not to have a, a laissez-faire attitude about joining yourself together with the saints. You ought not to follow uh, every wind of doctrine. You follow after the Lord. There are many things that, that a disciple does because a disciple is serious concerning their commitment to the Lord. And the times are coming that's going to test your commitment. And we're getting you ready. Amen. So this morning, I want to minister to you from the subject. The battle is the Lord's battle. Say with me. The battle is the Lord's battle. Say it again. The battle is the Lord's battle. Now, can I quickly say behind that title, every battle is not the Lord's battle. Oh, and you, you say, come on, pastor, you didn't, you didn't trip this up already. First of all, you said the battle is the Lord's battle, and then you say every battle is not the Lord's battle. There are battles that you create. They're not God's battles. You went to God in prayer and said, Lord, I, Lord, I, I, I need $50 for this uh, electric bill. Lord, could you, Lord, send somebody. Help me, Lord, do. And somebody comes and help you, and you go down the street and spend the $50 on something else, and they cut off your electricity, and you get up in church, and you talk about how you're in darkness and nobody want to help you, and you're in a battle. You created the battle. There's a lot of times you created the battle. Are you listening to me? But I'm talking about the real battles, the stuff that deal with your destiny. Are you listening to me? Listen, the stuff that deal with your right to exist, your right to occupy that the, the land that the Lord has given you, the right to walk in the things that God has given you, the right to fulfill your destiny and fulfill his word. Are you listening to the right for the kingdom's sake? The right for you standing. Those are all the Lord's battles. You didn't call yourself. You didn't save yourself. And so everything that God is responsible for, he is going to fight for, for you. Oh, somebody ought to praise the Lord for that. That was it. Y'all not a praising people. That was a good time for y'all to praise the name of the Lord. Yes. Hallelujah. The battle is the Lord's battle, but not every battle is his battle because simply we create battles. Now, let me explain something further so you get a better understanding of what I mean. If the Lord tells you, Brother Marcus, Brother Marcus, I want you to go to Generette and I want you to go on a certain street there's going to be a man standing on the corner. I want you to tell him I love him and tell him stop doing what he's doing and serve me. Okay. Brother Marcus believes that that's God. He jumps in his car. He heads the generator. All of a sudden, he, he, he gets a blowout. He's got four brand new tires. I'm not trying to be mystical with you. I just want to give you an example. He jumps out, he fixed the flat. All right? He goes a little further, there's an accident. He can't go, he's got to wait. He finally gets to Generate and he pulls up at a stop sign. He's almost to the place and somebody come knock on his window and, and, and begin talking with him and pulls a gun out on him. Uh -oh. <laughs> Want his stuff. Okay? So, he's in peril. He gives them all the money he had. Now, he's got a choice. Either he's going to be in distress over what just happened, or he's going to go do what the Lord says to do. 
What he don't know is God had initiated this. Not initiated somebody coming to his window with a gun, but initiating him going to Generat and going to that specific corner where that specific person is and saying to him what God wanted him to say. The battle is the Lord. He does, what he doesn't know, the guy was going to kill him. The guy had it in his heart to kill him. What he don't know is the guy was trying to pull a trigger and it wouldn't fire. I'm telling you, the battle is the Lord's. So he goes, does what God says, and he drives back and he sees police cars. They then pick the guy up and he pulls up and he tells them, he just robbed me. They say, yes, look, here's your wallet right here. Take it, you know, Mr. Dalbany. I'm telling you, the battle is the Lord's. Amen. Amen. Are you listening to me? Amen. And sometimes when you're dealing with things and, and something come on, you just like dealing with people, somebody in your household, husband, wife, etc. Listen, when people begin to make choices that bring you, that's trying to draw you into darkness, I come to tell you the battle is the Lord's. It's the Lord's battle because if, if here you are trying to serve God and somebody else now is bringing peril in your life to pull you out of the things of God, the battle is the Lord's battle. Amen. And you don't need to listen. The thing that you must not do is don't get out of righteousness because somebody is acting a fool and doing wickedness. Your standing is in the righteousness of God. I don't care how you feel. The thing is going to make you feel horrible. You listen, you want to take things in your own hands and you want to deal with it because you don't trust God to do it. You're trusting in your flesh because you want to get some kind of satisfaction, not really knowing it ain't going to satisfy you. You could bury them six foot under, pour some dirt on them. I'm telling you, the hurt that is in your heart is not going to go away until you forgive them. Amen. Ooh, glory to God. I'm telling you, this is heavy, heavier than you could think. Mm. It ain't going to go away. I'm telling you, listen, God wants you to learn how to stand in his righteousness. And sometimes you got to back up and they're going to call you a coward and they're going to call you. You have no backbone. And why are you not standing? And why are you not doing this? And why don't you do that? They're going to give you all kind of advice, but it's coming from that flesh and it's coming from that old nature. And it's coming from a place that will defeat you and take you off your righteous stand in the things of God. The battle is. Is the Lord's battle. It's the Lord's battle. God fight for his children. Well, maybe some of you may think, well, pastor, I don't know what done happened to the Lord. All this stuff happened to me and I don't know why it happened and yada, God has abandoned me. What did, what did you do for God to abandon you? What can you do? What can separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus? The enemy want to convince you that the Lord's abandoned you because the moment you take up the attitude that God is not on your side, you're going to do things on your own. And that's when you step right out of the will of God and the enemy can accuse you and then attack you. This, look, I've said this time and time and time again. We've not caught it holistically. Some of us have. You've got to understand. The devil have no authority over you unless you step out of the things of God. Amen. Amen. Right. Well, pastor, but why these things come? They come to get you out of the will of God. He can't take you out. Look at some of these saints. Look at my life. Look at some of these people that have served the Lord. They still serving the Lord. Went through hell and high water back and around. And they still claim in the name of the Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. That ought to give you a testimony that you cannot be overcome. They've gone through divorce. They've gone through hurt. They've gone through death in their family. They've gone through abandonment. They've gone through betrayal. They've gone through all kinds of things, and they're still serving the Lord. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. 
Hallelujah. The battle is the Lord's. You hear? You hear what I'm telling you? You know, we were minding our own business, doing our little church thing, until the Lord said, I want this city. I'm, I'm just telling you, we were doing our own little thing. And, you know, God was happy with that. But you see, when God initiates something, he fights for it. That's why you always hear me telling you, be encouraged, get a word from God. Amen. Begin to hear what God has to say to you about you. You see, because a lot of times you're going to go through things, to go around that mountain more than once simply because you haven't taken the word of God to heart and do it. Amen. This is not going to be a time where you just come, keep feeding off the word of God and looking for it every Sunday when he gave you a word three Sundays ago and you hadn't even done nothing with it. We cannot be people like that. This is, this is the type times that God is building something and you must pay attention to what he's dropping in your spirit and you have to take care of it. Shut stuff down if you have to. When God speaks to you, he is going to fight for what he spoke to you. Amen. You hear me? This is important for you to understand. Now, you know, I, I'll give you, let me give you some examples. And, you know, I got, I got plenty of message, but, you know, and plenty of time. Praise the Lord. Amen. Okay, listen to me. Uh, sometimes in our battles, in the way the Lord deals with things is he'll give you a burden about something. It's from him. You may not know it's from him at the time. He'll give you a burden about something and you begin to pray about it. You can't get it off your heart, can't get it off your mind. You begin to pray about it. Okay? Now, what happens is it may be something that you see that needs to be done. Okay? And so you take it upon yourself and make a decision. I'm going I'm to do that. Lord, can I do that? Maybe you hear yes, maybe you don't hear anything, but you still have the burden. You go do it. Then all of a sudden you get opposition. Things start happening in your life. All before you're sitting over here minding your own business, everything is good. The moment you take up this burden and go after it, all hell breaks loose. Amen. What in the world you think that is? You think it was happenstance? You're standing for righteousness. You've come, listen, you've come directly, directly in contact with the enemy and the enemy see that you're headed toward a righteous destination and he's ready and up to keep you from getting there. If you want to understand this, read the book of Nehemiah. You don't have to read the whole book. I guess read all the way to chapter, let's see. Verse, uh, chapter 8, I think verse 10 uh, is the statement uh, where, uh, I'll put that up, put it up. Nehemiah, Nehemiah eight ten. not even on my notes. I want to make sure of that. It's a popular verse. Probably. Then he said to them, go your way, eat the fat, drink the sweet, and send portions uh, to those for whom nothing is prepared, for the day is holy to our God. Do not let sorrow for the joy. That's what I wanted. The joy of the Lord is your strength. Okay. If you're going the way of doing something righteous for God, you're taking up a cause, etc., you need to read Nehemiah. And you need to read it in steps. And you need to read and see and count the people that, that, that stand against Nehemiah, count them as demons and demonic forces from the enemy. Amen. Because why do you count them as such? Because they are standing against uh, God's Amen. will. Now, you, what is God's will in the book of Nehemiah? God's will is to build the walls around Jerusalem. Why is that so important? You'll see that that is so important because there's a decree 
there's a decree in the word of God that the moment that those walls begin to be built up to another time will be the coming of the Messiah. Do you think that rebuilding the walls was important? It set a date. And so it was important. It was important to God and it was important to Nehemiah. You don't see in the book of Nehemiah where God said, Nehemiah, go build a wall. Nehemiah asked one of his brethren, how was the city? He said the city was broken down and the walls were burned with fire. And he, he sat down and he wept and he prayed and then the burden dropped inside of him and then he started to act. Talked to the king, the king gave him the right, gave him the letter to cross people land. All this is spiritual. You see, when God gives you a burden, you have the right. Demonic forces don't have the right to mess with you, but they will try. You must stay in faith. And so Nehemiah gets and he goes and he, and he arrives in Jerusalem and he don't tell anybody what he was doing. See, sometimes when God speaks something to us, we blabble it over all over the place. I see it on Facebook, Snapchat, Instagram. Everybody know, oh, I got a burden. No, you don't need to do all that. You know, you don't need to do all that. Stand in what God's told you. Go do what he told you. Why are you doing it anyway? Do you want some kind of accolade because God's giving you a burden? You better know what you're facing. You're going doing something for God in a world that's filled with imps and demons that is there ready to stop you. But the battle is the Lord's battle. Amen. And it was the Lord's battle for Nehemiah. Nehemiah gets over there. He gets immediate opposition. Now look, now you got to look at every time this guy, San Ballad or San Balot, every time he stands against Nehemiah, he uses a tactic. Look at the tactics. The very first thing he did was something I mentioned in my last message of ridicule. On Wednesday night, we talked about ridicule. He will try to ridicule you. He'll make fun, trying to demean and make minor what you're doing for God. And if you let that mindset rest in your own head, you'll think it's meager and it's minor and you won't be serious about it. That's what he's trying to do. He's trying to diffuse the seriousness of what you're trying to do. Listen to me now. Listen, this is for somebody. Don't take grandmothers, grandfathers, moms and dads. Do not take. Do not take it trivial of the raising of your kids and the atmosphere of your home. Don't take it. Don't take it to be trivial. Don't let your children fight against each other. Did you hear what I just said? We take it trivial because we say, oh, yeah, they, everybody did that. I did that, too. And yada, yada, yada. Don't let that happen. It devalues your household. It devalues re the relationship in between them. It devalues it where they, where they grow up with no concern for each other. And guess what, parents? I know that's not what you want, but if you let that happen, that's what you're going to get. You understand? We didn't allow any of our kids to make fun of each other. You hear what I'm saying? Now, you may, once again, you may think this is trivial, but this stuff is building something. you got to know what the Lord's battle is, and you got to take this stuff serious. Now, I want you to look at 1 Samuel chapter 17. Put it up beginning at verse 45. <clears throat> and don't worry about the rest of it. I've skipped over all that. We're going to get to the meat of the thing here. Praise God. Hallelujah. Okay. I want us to read. We're going to read here first. First Samuel, verse 17, verse 45 through what? 47, I believe. 47. Ready? Let's all read. Ready? Read. David said to the Philistine, you come against me with sword and spear and javelin, but I come against you in the name of the Lord Almighty the God of the armies of Israel, whom you have defied. Verse 46, this day the Lord will deliver you into my hand and I will strike you down and cut off your head. This very day I will give the carcasses of the Philistine army to the birds and the wild animals. 
and the whole world will know that there is a God in Israel. And then 47, which we take our subject from, all those gathered here will know that it is not by sword or spear that the Lord saves, for the battle is the Lord's, and he will give all of you into our hands. Say amen. Amen. Now, David is speaking this, and he's speaking this to a giant. Remember what I told you about faith. Faith doesn't look at the size of the enemy. There is no enemy that can be large enough to defeat faith. Amen. There is none. I don't care what it is. Don't care what it is in your life. Okay, look. One of the deterrents of putting this thing in the Lord's hand for you is that we have not wholly given all of ourselves to the Lord. That's a deterrent. When you haven't given yourself all the way over to the Lord, then you have reservations. When you have given yourself wholly to any cause, I'm talking about you've expended everything you had. When it goes south, when it goes sour, when it goes bad, you're not discouraged. You know why? Because you gave it your all. Amen. When you don't give your all and it goes south and it goes sour and it goes bad, you begin to wonder, I wonder what I could have done different to try to secure this thing. I should have done something different. But when you have given all and the giants in your life begin to appear and it looks like they are very formidable, there is, a, there is some direction I'm going to give you concerning warfare here in just a moment, and I want you to get it, and I want you to use it. I'm giving it to you to use, but I want you to understand something. You must give yourself wholly to the Lord, all of you. You cannot let any of you out because when it comes down to the battle, the enemy is going to expose what you've kept for yourself. Because that's going to be the area he's going to attack. Because that's going to be the area that is exposed. Are you listening to me? The enemy should never shoot you in the behind. All right. What'd you say, Sister Callan? Don't turn your back. Don't turn your back and run. That means no fear. Look at somebody and tell them no fear. No fear. It's important. I'm telling you. Look at somebody. Tell them again. No fear. No fear. Tell them again. No fear. Come on, I'm telling you, listen, the enemy is looking and he's smelling for fear. He's like a wild animal, like a lion that is looking, that gets out there and roar and wants some of his prey to be in, in, in fear and in, in really panic so he can pounce and have lunch. The enemy operates just like that. But look at somebody and tell them, no fear. See, you got to have no fear in this. Well, Pastor Zach, I don't know what you're talking about. Have you, listen, Goliath, this Goliath and mountain in my life is formidable. I don't know whether I'm going to make it or not. When you have given yourself wholly to God, it doesn't matter whether you make it or not. Come on now. Well, I know y'all going to be quiet on that one because I'm telling you the truth. You see, that's what this thing is. Whole. Listen, when you've given up all that you have, to the Lord and you know that the purpose and cause is righteous and you give all you have to it if it don't work it ain't on your court and it's not on your watch you've given everything you had for God are you listening to me this, this, listen that's what discipleship is this is why we have failed because we have kept back some of ourselves from the Lord and the enemy exposes that this is why we whine and cry and run to and fro and all mixed up and all that. It's because we haven't wholly surrendered to God. We don't want to go through something tough for God. We don't want to go through discouragement. We don't want to eat peanut butter and jelly sandwiches for a time till God raised us up. If you eat peanut butter and jelly sandwich, call me. I'll bring some milk and we'll have a good time. I love peanut butter and jelly. Don't y'all bring me none, though. Praise the Lord. <laughs> you have to understand 
that with the Lord, you are going to make it. You're talking about the God of all the earth. So number one, listen, one of the things that will deter us from getting into the mode that the battle is the Lord is that we are not wholly given unto the Lord. So when we hold something back, the enemy exploits it, and all of a sudden, it becomes our battle. Y'all listening to me? You don't want it to be your battle. Hmm? I don't know whether y'all remember. Y'all remember the the Josephs that we have here, black couple, elderly couple, they were ministering. They said something like that. Stood right over here. They're right over here. And I think he said, listen, we don't have any battles. The battle's the Lord battle. And you know, you know, I, that caught my ear. There are certain things that you listen for and it will grab a hold of in your spirit. I didn't like it at first. I'm just being open with you. Because I done fought many battles just like you have, you know, and I done fought some battles that, you know, they were, they were my battles. Okay. But I needed to understand the word that I'm preaching to you now. And I have, and the only way that I can understand that is when I have wholly given myself totally over to God, where God becomes responsible for my existence. Mm. Now that's deep because, because, because there are some things that happen in our life that we don't understand. And you mean to say God is responsible for my existence? Yes, he is. You can't tell me. I'm telling you, there's some things that have come against you that should have took you out. Amen. You ought to be crazy locked up somewhere in the funny form with your hair all in knots, all nappy, smelly, in an insane asylum, can't walk, but I'm telling you, because you are God's goods, he brought you out, he raised you up, and you're still in your right mind. Are y'all listening to me this morning? The battle is the Lord's battle. One of our problems is we, we because God has intervened, we don't see how worse it could have been. We don't see how it could have been. You need to get out on the streets and see because you see out on the streets the could have been. You could have been out there with no nothing over your head, sleeping behind Walmart, sleeping under bridges. And it's not that you're better than them. It's by choices. Hallelujah. I'm telling you the battle is the lost battle. But it can't be the lost battle if you're holding back part of you. Ooh, I think I could just stay on that till about 2 o'clock, till I run out of voice. And I listen, I've been preaching a long time. When I first started, I used to preach about at least two, maybe three messages on a Sunday. So all I got to do is start exercising that, and y'all in trouble. <laughs> No, we stay on task now. We preach by the Holy Ghost. <laughs> Amen. It says in the NLT, verse 47, and everyone will know that the Lord does not need weapons to rescue his people. It is his battle, not ours. The Lord will give you to us. You see, that's, the, well, listen, that's the issue. That's where you are. When you're sold out to God, listen, the Lord don't need weapons. You don't need to pull a gun on the guy. You don't need to try to manipulate and beat him up and get somebody to take him out or get somebody to hurt him or her. You don't need all that. That's stuff that comes in your heart from the enemy. When God deals with something, it's dealt with and it's done. You don't have to look over your head. You don't have to look behind you. You don't have to think that something else is going to happen. When he deals with it, he closed the door on it and it's done. And you can walk away from it saying, Lord, thank you. I thank you that you kept me. Now, Lord, I'm in peril. I need this, this, and this. But, Lord, you brought me out. God knows where you are. It's his battle. He will provide for you in his battle. Thank you, Father. Glory to God. I remember, ladies, I, I'm not apologizing to you, but I want to tell you what I spoke to the guys 
but I want to encourage you wives that the, that the guys, they didn't take it. So, but I'm going to tell you what I told them anyway. This is what I told our guys. I said, listen, if you get in your place in the Lord and your wife is out, she's acting crazy, et cetera, doesn't want to do the things of God. I said, but if you get in your place, then you have the authority and right to go to God and say, God, I release her to you. Straighten her up. Amen. I told them that. And they looked at me. Oh, yeah, Pastor Zach. Yeah, okay. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. So Scallon said, yeah, and their wife beat them up. No, they didn't, they didn't take the word serious. Are you listening to me? I didn't tell them that because this was some kind of doctrine I find in the Bible. It's in the Bible, but I worked it in my own marriage. There are too many husbands that are fearful of their wife. Sis Callan, yeah, you don't want me to go there, but I'm going to go there anyway. Yeah. The reason why husbands are fearful of their wives is number one because their wife will cut off sex. And you and I both know that's witchcraft. Now, I don't care whether you think it is or not, it's witchcraft. Okay? That's one reason. The second reason, only two reasons. The second reason why is that he wants peace in the house, he just don't want all this stuff. And he will compromise. And he doesn't know. When he compromises, he goes right to the door, he opens it and says, devil, come on in. You can have my family, you can have my wife. He don't know that. Compromise will do that in this situation. Are you listening to me? Compromise. Compromise, passivity will open up a door for the enemy. You got to stand and that's why you got to know this stuff. You can't just hear me preach it. You got to live it. Hallelujah. Praise God. All right. All right. Okay. So. The Lord fights with us, and he fights for us. Did you hear me? Mark chapter 16, verse 20. Mark chapter 16, verse 20. And they went out and preached everywhere, the Lord working with them. The Lord working with them. The battle may be the Lord, but you're going to have to go to the battle. The battle was the Lord, but David showed up. He showed up. He went to the, to the, to the creek. He got the stones, and he put himself in position, and the giant said what he had to say, and David said, you come to me with a javelin and a spear and a sword, but I come to you with the only weapon I need, and that's the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. The name of the Lord is a strong tower. Are you listening to me? The gospel of John chapter 1 verse 11 and 12 talks about we become children of God and have the right and the authority to be children of God according to the name of Jesus. The Bible says that in his name there is life according to John 20, 31 and then Acts 3, 16. The name of the Lord makes us strong and give us soundness. Are you listening to me? David said that. David showed up. He showed up at the battle. You hear me? You don't run from the battle. Huh? You don't. Listen. (laughs) You wait. I'm going to give you these instructions in just a minute on how to fight. There is a war coming. Pastor, don't tell us that. We don't want to hear that. Uh, we, We, you know, We've been in a fight before. Uh, we fighting in our household, and we we fighting on every hand, and yada yada yada. We need some rest. It ain't time to rest. Okay, 
You're going to have to get some rest at another time. See? You, you, listen, time goes on, life goes on. I told somebody once, I said, you know what? I, I could really do a good job and be a good pastor if life just stopped. For people, just life stop. Then I can catch up. But guess what? It never stops, bro, Joey. Tomorrow we're going to have something to deal with. So you may as well just face up to it. Okay? Mm, mm, mm. God fights with us and he fights for us. Nehemiah 420. Whenever you hear the sound of the trumpet rally to us there, our God will fight for us. There are some people under the sound of my voice that God is fighting for. Amen. And this is what you look like. You look like a person that you've abandoned everything to God and you're listening to what he has to say. And whatever he says, you're taking it on. When he says go, you're going. When he says stop, you stop. When he says shut up, you shut up. Now, a lot of times in those three situations, you want to do the opposite. But you know that the battle is the Lord's battle, and he's fighting for you. That's the only reason why you're still alive is because he's fighting for you. Because the forces around you are trying to destroy you. And you're going into, listen, some of you are in the lion's den, and the lion can't eat you up. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. I'm telling you, listen, the Lord is fighting for you. He said, but God, Pastor, correct me if I'm wrong. God's all powerful, right? Right. Well, he can destroy all my enemies, right? But when your enemy is your wife or your husband or your relative or your boss, do you really want God to destroy him? You want him to save them. Don't you want them, Brother Alonzo? They're crazy. They're giving you all kinds of hell, all kinds of pain, and here you are. Oh, God, do something with them. You don't want him to destroy them. Remember when the disciples said, Lord, can we call down lightning on him? Come on, y'all, y'all don't know. Yeah, yeah, thank you. <laughs> yeah, you don't know what kind of spirit you are. See, he ain't called you to destroy people. I mean, come on, don't get me wrong, you want to. The pain sometimes get to be great. And, and we begin to see the person as the problem. The person ain't the problem. There's something operating in the person, behind the person, and through the person. And that's why you got to focus your attention and your prayer. And God focuses in the same place. Don't get angry with God like Jonah. Jonah was given the task to go preach to Nineveh, and he knew God would save him. If they repent, he knew God would turn around and save them. He didn't want them saved because they did his family wrong and they did some of his people wrong and he didn't want to. That's right. Now listen, this is real truth. He gets on a ship headed the opposite direction of where he needs to go. And, he, and listen to me now. He gets in the place to where he's on a ship and all hell break loose. Even sailors that's been sailing on the sea are saying, we ain't never seen a storm like this. What are we going to do? There's something wrong. And Jonah gets up and say, I'm the problem. The Lord told me to go in a certain direction. I'm said, I'll put all of you in peril. You don't know what kind of person you are when God is fighting for you, when the battle is the Lord's. Yes. Oh, Father. Oh, Father. Throw me in the sea, he said. Throw me in. They didn't want to do it because they felt like they were destroying the person. He said, no. He said, if you don't throw me in, all of us going to perish because this God I serve, he is serious. Yes. He gave me a mandate. He said, threw him in there. And they thought they were fearful of a storm. But when they threw that man in there, the storm was raging and everything smoothed out. 
then they were really afraid. <laughs> Because now they knew that this was no ordinary storm and there is a being behind it that will take according to the words of men and will work for them or against them. They were afraid. And if you go the wrong direction, God is going to swallow you up in a sense of dryness and darkness until you repent. And once you repent, it's almost going to be like the, the fish will spit you up on dry ground. Man, do you know how, <laughs> listen, man, spit him up on dry ground. Didn't spit him up in the sea on dry ground. Spit him up. Trust me, he ran then. But he still had something in his heart. Listen to me now, guys. People will do stuff to you. They will hurt you. They will, they will abandon you. People will do this. Do not. Allow that to get in your heart. And if it get in, repent of it. Are y'all listening to me? This is important. Because the war that's coming, it is going to require that you know how to keep your heart right. <coughs> Did y'all hear what I just said? The war that's coming, you're going to have to know how to keep your heart right. And not let. The Bible says to guard your heart. Because out of your heart flows the issues of life. You got to guard it. Listen, don't be anxious for nothing, but by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your request be made known unto God, and the peace of God which passeth all understanding shall guard your heart and your mind in Christ Jesus. There are some of you that You've allowed the enemy to cloud your mind with all this stuff about worshiping God and not being right before God and all that stuff as if, as if you had something to do with your righteousness. The righteousness I'm talking about that has saved you is only from God. You got to understand you're not the only person that's dealing with this kind of battle. We all have dealt with it and we all fall uh, to the point in the place before the Lord and we, and we just stay there. We can't beat ourselves up. We can't do penance because we thought wrong. Listen to what I am telling you. There are many thoughts going to come into your big head. There's an old saying, I don't know who said it, but I'll take ownership of it. You can't keep the birds from flying over your head, but you sure can keep them from making a nest in your hair. Which simply means that things are going to come to your mind. They're going to come and keep them going. Keep, they're going to come, you keep them going. You know, coming and going. Amen. Don't let them rest in your head. Don't let them build a nest in your head. Tell them according to what the word of God says. Bring them under subjection to the, to the word of God and Christ. Tell your mind, this is not of Christ. Christ said this. You, can't, you say, well, pastor, that's going to exhaust me. I'll be doing this all day. Good. <laughs> What's wrong with it? You know, do it all day. It'll bring you out of darkness. I mean, we do other things all day because we want results. Why can't we do it with this? Amen. I'm just telling you, we, we just got to be radical. The battle is the Lord's battle. Oh, gee, I need about another hour. Mm. <laughs> Hallelujah. Let, let me give you. Oh, I'm a, I got to go back to this. Not today, though. <laughs> but let me let me. No, I, I'm going to still give you two, two, two points, two, two stories. Second Chronicles chapter 20, beginning at verse 14. We'll do that, and then I'll give you the scripture with some instructions for warfare. And we'll quit there. All right. Then the Spirit of the Lord uh, came upon Jehaziel, the son of Zechariah, the son of Benaniah, the son of Jael, the son of Mataniah, a Levite of the sons of Asaph, in the midst of the assembly. 15. Verse 15. And he said, listen, all you of Judah and you inhabitants of Jerusalem and you King Jehoshaphat. 
Thus said the Lord to you, do not be afraid nor dismayed because of this great multitude, for the battle is not yours, but God's. Now notice the instructions a prophetic utterance is given to the people of God. Notice the instructions. What are the instructions? Thus says the Lord to you. Thus says the Lord to you. Who's saying it? The Lord is saying it. What does the Lord say? Do not be afraid nor dismayed. Fear, afraidness is a tactic that the enemy uses. So that he can enter in and get you defeated. You're going to see even in the instructions for warfare, you cannot be fearful. And you have every reason not to fear when you have the God of heaven fighting for you and with you. The angels of heaven ministering to you, the Holy Ghost that's on the inside of you, the word of God that is in your mouth covered by the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. Somebody ought to say amen. amen. We are not convinced that all these things, okay, all these things make us overcome us and cause us to always triumph in Christ. Verse 16. Tomorrow, Go down against them. Now, you see, you see the instruction here? The battle is the Lord's battle. But what did he tell them? Yo, go to the battlefront. No, you don't want to go see what's going on. You want to go out there and you want to get yourself in position for God to use you. Uh-huh. But you're not fighting on your own. There's a difference. Fighting on your own and fighting a battle that is the Lord's battle. They will surely come up by the ascent of Ziz. Now listen, that's intel. That's instructions. In the Lord's battle, he will always give you instruction. He will always uncover the enemy so you can see where he is. He'll give you instructions when things are in apparel, when you don't know which way to go. It's coming at you full force, and you're asking the Lord, Lord, show me something, and he shows you. Don't be foolish and not take it. Do what he tells you to do. He said, they will surely come up by the accent of Ziz, and you will find them at the edge of the brook before the wilderness of Jeruel, 17. Sometimes in the lost battle, you just have to show up. Look at somebody and tell them, show up. Tell somebody else, show up. Sometimes you're going to have to show up. You can't sit at your house and say, that's the law's battle. I'll let him fight it. No, 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 no. Yeah, he's going to fight it, but he's going to use you. You need to show up. Say, show up. Show up. You got to show up. See? You will not need to fight in this battle. Position yourself. Stand still and see the salvation of the Lord who is with you, O Judah and Jerusalem. Do not fear or be dismayed. Tomorrow go out against them, for the Lord is with you. We can go out because the Lord is with us. We can stand because the Lord is with us. We can have victory because the Lord is with us. Sometimes I don't think. Sometimes... You see, here in America, we have gotten into this mindset of comfortability that we don't want anything difficult. We don't want to work through anything. If, if it's hard, we don't want to deal with it. How in the world do you think you get strong? Huh? Let's just take something naturally, okay? Let's just say Sis Carolyn want to be a weightlifter. God, Sis Carolyn, don't say nothing. <laughs> just be quiet. Just be quiet. All right. She want to be a weightlifter. You think she's going to be a weightlifter? Lift? Well, she could be lifting that purse, but, but, you know, she's got to lift some weights. She's got to work on some stuff. She's got, I mean, she's just got to work on it, okay? 
Sister Callie, it ain't, muscles ain't going to happen just by you wishing it. You got to work on that. I'm, I'm just, you know, using you as an example. Now, you wasn't supposed to say anything now. Okay. Because <laughs> I know you want to. <laughs> oh, glory to God. Tomorrow, go out against them, for the Lord is with you. Go. Position yourself. Show up and watch God show out. <laughs> glory to God, glory to God, glory to God. Hallelujah. Come on now. Uh, mm -hmm. All right, let me, uh, let me close with this. Praise the Lord. Turn with me to the book of Deuteronomy. Chapter 20, beginning at verse 1. We're going to use this. I'm telling you, this is some good stuff. Are you listening to me? I want to sit down and hear it preach. It's just so good. <laughs> Hallelujah. Oh, when you go out to battle, you hear that? You will have to go out to battle. Stop being a cream puff and a cushy person. Have some backbone. Stand up. For what is right. You don't have to stand up against hordes. Stand up in your house. Amen. When you go out to battle. Not if you go. When you go. When you go out to battle against your enemies. You got enemies. Are you listening to me? I know some of you are like me. Such a nice person. Who would want to be an enemy to me. I'm just so nice, this Carolyn. Yeah, isn't that wonderful? Huh? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Trust me. It ain't about me. And it ain't about you. I don't care how nice you are. It ain't about you. It is about the calling of God that's on your life. If you think the devil's going to like you because you're just good and you don't make no waves, trust me, he is going to be one that's going to eat you up. You got to have a backbone. You got to stand for something. Stop letting stuff overtake you. Man, I'm sitting at my house and I'm, I'm looking at all the unfinished projects. I, look, I tell you what, all you wonderful husbands, how many of you have unfinished projects at your house? Raise your hand. Anybody? Okay. See, boy. Oh, you're raising your hand for Joe. <laughs> You're going to have to. Hey, Joe, your wife raised a hand for you. <laughs> Now, get the CD for him and let him hear it. Oh, you did too? Yeah, tell him that. Uh-huh. Y'all with me? Unfinished stuff. Just unfinished things. See? You, look, you're going to have to go out to battle. You have some enemies. Look, one, one of the things that we have to find, look, one, this is the way we think. Okay? Really, we, we actually think that some of these things is going to solve themselves. We, we, we really don't think that, but we think that. Because we just never do them. Oh, y'all not listening to them. I'm talking to the guys now. I know, see, you ladies, y'all trying to do everything and, and, and all this stuff all at once and yada, 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 and so forth and so on. And mm, mm, mm. Man, I tell you what, my... <laughs> My wife told me, well, when are you going to do something about that? And I had to look at her, sweetheart, I didn't think you noticed that. <laughs> Which I was really saying, I hope you didn't notice it, but she did. Amen. Praise the Lord. When you go out to battle against your enemies and you see horses, chariots, people that are more numerous than you, do not be afraid of them. Now, do you see the situation? Let's, let's, this is teaching, okay? All right? Okay, we already established it's not if you go to battle, it's when you go. Okay? And you don't go to battle just to hang around. You go to battle against enemies, enemies of your soul. 
you going to go to battle with enemies against you. So look at what he said. Now, when you get out there on the battlefield and you see that there's much horses and chariots, in other words, whatever the thing you're going to fight against, it looks formidable. It looks mighty. It looks many. But God says, don't be afraid of them, for the Lord your God is with you. You see it. Then he gives you an example of what he's done. That's what you got to use in the battle. There's none of you sitting here that hadn't had a victory in the Lord. We all have had victories in the Lord. We heard some. Let your enemies know the Lord delivered me out of this and he'll deliver me out of your hand. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, shout to the Lord. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. Thank you, Lord. Can we get the verse two? That's more instruction. Verse two. Come on. <laughs> so it shall be when you are on the verge of battle. <laughs> You've gone out there, not if you go to the battle, but when against your enemies, don't be afraid because of what they look like. The Lord is with you. And then when you get on the verge, get a word from the Lord. That's what this means. Look at it. So it shall be when you are on the verge of the battle that the priest shall approach and speak to the people. You got to get a word from God. There's a reason why you're fighting the way you're fighting. Lord, I'm fighting for my children because you said that they are going to be mighty in the earth. Fight for them. Stand for them. Lord, I'm standing for my grandchildren because their mom and dad, they're crazy. And, and this, is the only, this is the only righteousness they see. This is the only way we're going to get them in church. This is the only way we're going to get them exposed to the word. Fight for them. Don't be afraid. Stand for them. Get a word from God for them. All right, verse 3. And he shall say to them, Hear, O Israel, today you are on the verge of battle with your enemies. Do not let your heart faint. Do not be afraid and do not tremble or be terrified because of them. Hallelujah. In all this stuff, the word of God is a direct instruction to don't ever get in fear. You hear me? They look formidable, but they don't know your God. They look mighty, but they're not almighty like your God is. They look powerful, but they're not all powerful like your God is. Don't faint. <laughs> Look at somebody and tell them, don't faint. Don't faint. Don't faint. Tell them, don't fall out. <laughs> See, do not be afraid, do not tremble, or be terrified because of them. Verse 4, last verse. For the Lord your God is he who goes with you to fight for you against your enemies to save you. You see, you see it. Do you see it? See, it's encapsulated in this verse. For the Lord God, he is who goes with you to fight for you. He goes with you to fight for you. Are you listening? He goes with you to fight for you. And to fight against your enemies, to save you. There are some of you, and I can call your name out. And some of you have accepted the word of doctors and people and etc. Come on, come on. And God says, don't be afraid of that word. They are only speculating according to what they've been taught. Yes. Yes. Hear my voice. 
And here, what I, some of us have given up a place to the enemy to destroy, to continually destroy our life. You say, now, Pastor, what are you, what are you talking about? Uh, are you talking about because we've accepted the word of a doctor and we're taking medication? No, no, I'm not talking about the medication. I am talking about that this attitude, there's an attitude that, that we uh, release ourselves to the opinion of people, and it, and it causes us to really depend on the medication, and we never bring God in on the scene at all. Now, did you, did you understand? Now, if you don't understand, say, Pastor, look, I want to come see you, and you give me some more understanding. I want you to understand something. You're going to go to the doctor. They're going to diagnose you with something, and they're going to put you on medication. Are you listening to me? Okay? Understand. Understand that you need to listen and you need to hear what God has to say and you need to always keep God on the scene even in the medicated condition. Don't give up on God and depend totally on the medication. Continue to pray to the Lord and ask God to heal you. Continue to depend on the Lord. I don't know if you remember, we were teaching on Asa, and Asa was a mighty man. He did all that which was right in the sight of God, but the, if you keep reading his story, he didn't depend on God when a battle came in the latter years, and he depended on the army of Syria, and God sent a man of God to tell him, said, listen, I would have given all these people into your hand, but you didn't depend on me. Now, listen to what I'm telling you because this is important. When you get out with God like that, when you get out in, a, in an area where you don't trust God, you better understand that the enemy is going to recognize this weak area and exploit it. Asa got a disease in his feet. And the Bible says he didn't seek the Lord, and he died because of the thing in his feet. He, he didn't seek the Lord. He sought physicians. This is what that means. He didn't even give the Lord a chance. Even if he'd have went to the physicians, he didn't bring God on the scene. That's what this battle plan is talking about. The enemy wants to get things in your life to hinder you from doing the will of God to bring about what God wants to bring about in your life. Thank you, Jesus. Wow. Thank you, yes. Jesus. And we've relinquished ourselves to him. The battle is the Lord's battle. Now listen to me. Job start losing stuff in his life. What did he lose first? Anybody remember? He lost his stuff first. Then he lost his children. Then it hit his body. Are y'all listening to me? You hear me? Now, now listen. Look at it this way. If you are a Christian and you're depending on stuff. See, when the devil get a right to take your stuff, you, you done lost it, if that's the kind of person you are. But if you're a person to know that the stuff came from the Lord in the first place, then you, you move on. But when it comes to your children, you would prefer to give up your life for theirs. Amen. I mean, let's just be real. But it does happen. Okay. But God leaves you here for a reason. Amen. Are you listening to me? For a reason. You, don't, you may not know why God took them or God may not have taken them. It, it may have been the enemy did it, it not, you know, etc. And that's not the issue. The issue is you are here to continue some things. Amen. This is why the Bible brings forth uh, how we ought to grieve. Because if you don't watch it, you'll end up 20 years down the grieve. And you say, but Pastor Zach, you know, we ought not to tell people how long they can grieve. No, we ought not to. But I know it ain't going to be 20 years. 
If you're following after the things of the Lord, I mean, now you got to understand what I'm talking about when I say grieve. I'm talking about that, that sometimes people will tell you about their loved one and, and it's so vivid and they're so emotional. You know it happened last week and it happened 15 years ago. It's because they keep rehearsing it in. I'm not talking about not thinking about those that are lost. We, we're not people that lack compassion. But you got to know the calling of God and what God has on your life. That Listen, I'm telling you, the, the enemy tries to discourage us by taking this one out. Because he has for you 10,000 to win. And here you are focusing on one. This is real. Are you listening to me? I'm, I'm not heartless when it comes to this. And I'm not talking to any one of you personally. But I am telling you, you got to begin to take a look at this life as eternal and stop looking at that everything that's here on earth, when we leave here, it's done for. That, no, you're going to do some crazy stuff if you have that attitude. Hallelujah. Okay. How many of you fighting a battle? Raise your hand. You fight... You're fighting a battle. You know you're fighting a battle. No two ways about it. Stand to your feet. Those that raise their hands, stand to your feet. Now, I just want to give you some instructions. And the reason why I want to give instructions is because hooping and hollering at you don't get it. I need for you to assess the battle that you're fighting. I need for you to assess it. This is what I need for you to consider about the battle you're fighting. Is it something that you created? Okay? I want you to consider that. Is it something that you created? Is it something that you didn't do? God gave you instructions. He gave you provisions. And you just didn't do it. And now you have a crisis. Okay? All right? That's, that's assessment number one. Number two, if you are in apparel simply because of some decisions somebody else made, Okay, somebody else made, and it impacted you. The first thing you're going to have to do is you're going to have to ask the Lord to help you to forgive them. That's what you're going to have to do. If it's a person, if it's something operating through a person, this is why you're in a battle. You're going to have to ask the Lord to help you forgive them. Forgiveness doesn't just fall from the sky. It is something that God drops in your heart because you have relinquished the barriers. You've relinquished the barrier of retaliation, of, of getting your way. You've even relinquished the barrier, and this is going to hurt, but you've relinquished the barrier of rights. See, we don't want to hear that because, you know, I, I, I have some rights. Yes, you surely do. But you don't have the right to destroy anyone. But listen, we're talking about fighting a battle. The battle has come because of someone. You're going to have to forgive them. Then the next thing you do concerning this one is you're going to have to ask the Lord for instructions on how to pray. Are you listening to me? I'm trying to make this as simple as I can. Because you need to listen, because I don't have it written down. It's all by the Spirit of God. Amen. It ain't written down. Okay? So the first one is, if you're in a battle because of a decision or the lack of a decision you didn't make, you're in a battle, okay? You need, you need to deal with that. Second, if it's a person that's causing you trouble and difficulties, understand that you need to forgive them. Why forgive them? Because, because there's more behind this than just that person. And forgiveness operates in the realm of the spirit. 
It's a spiritual thing. Okay? And, and it, forgiveness keeps you from being weighed down with mully grubs and, and every. See, you'll know that you've forgiven someone when they come in your presence and they don't make you angry. Ask God to work on your heart concerning that. And when you have some victory in that, you know, you can pray along the lines, Lord, give me some instructions on how to deal with this, what to say, what to do. What do you want me to do? What is, what is my purpose in here? What have I contributed to? Now, every other situation of why you're fighting a battle, maybe, maybe it's because your economic situation, you've lost your job or, your, you know, a lack of promotion or, or all those kind of things is causing you to fight a battle. I want to encourage you. If it's in that realm of dealing with economy and economics, know of a sure that where you are now, you won't be there forever. Amen. You ought to already have the testimony in your heart. And it ought to come out of your mouth that my God shall supply all my needs according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. Because God has delivered you before. And for some of you, God's still delivering you. He's providing for you. You say, but pastor, you know, I, I just, I had to work for it. See, that's, you're cursing when you say that. See, work sometimes is a curse word to some people. <laughs> you see, you didn't have an avenue, you didn't have anything, and all of a sudden somebody called you up and said, could you come help me with this? I'll pay you. And you say, oh, Lord, I don't want to go. I don't want to go help them. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You're saying no to an opportunity that God just dropped in your lap. Yeah. I'm telling you, we just crazy sometimes. Because we don't discern. We, we, we let the pain speak to us loudly and more louder than the word of the living God. Are y'all listening to me? Amen. Thank you, Father. Bow your heads. Everybody that's standing, bow your heads. Say with me, Father, I ask you. For forgiveness. Forgive me, Lord. Every sin and any participation on my part to this condition, I ask that you forgive me. Lord, open up my heart. Deal with me so that I may make the right choice. Give me strength, Lord, to stand. Help me, Lord, because fear is chasing me. Lord, I declare and decree that fear is not my bread. That fear is not in my heart. Thank you, Lord, for causing me to stand. And now, Lord, I thank you for deliverance from this issue. I will stand on the battlefield. I will show up and take my position and place in this battle. I will rely totally on you, Lord, because... You are fighting for me and fighting with me. I know that I will win. I trust that you're almighty, that you know all and can do all. This situation is bread for us. We'll eat it alive if we have to. It will not consume me. I will live and not die to declare the glory of the Lord in my house, 
in the congregation, on the streets, to relatives, and to the enemy. I let him know, and I serve notice that I stand in the might of the Lord and the power of his might. In the name of Jesus, covered in the blood, I declare it and decree it in Jesus' name. Amen. And amen. And amen. And amen. And amen. Hallelujah. Come on, give the Lord praise. Hallelujah. Everybody stand. Everybody stand. Everybody. Come on, we got most of them standing. You may as well stand up. Praise the Lord. Hmm. I didn't even get to one of the points. See, the one thing we don't understand is that we are not our own. When you get saved, you give up your rights to your life. Are you listening to me? So many of us want to keep our rights because we're intelligent. You better take your intelligence and put it in your pocket when it comes to the things of the Lord. Use it when you have to, but when it comes to faith, you don't need intelligence. When you have, the, I'm telling you, when you have the word of God and the spirit of God dealing with things, you have victory in your life. I expect to hear some testimonies. I can, I can declare this to you, and this is not negative, but there are some of you that you're going to be in a battle for a while. But I want you to be encouraged. The Lord is with you. And this will not take you out. Did y'all hear what I just said? Mm -hmm. I know you may be tired. But ask the Lord to show you his Elam. E-L-I-M. Elam. Elam was a place in the Bible that Israel made a stop. It was a place of palm trees and refreshing water. It was a place of refreshing that the people came out of the wilderness of sin, came out of a horrible place, and God brought them to Elam. And they camped there for a while, and they were refreshed. And they were refreshed, and he sent them there for two reasons. One, they needed to be refreshed. That's one. Two, they didn't know what they were about to face. They were about to face something, and he needed them refreshed for what they were about to face. That's some of you. Some of you, he's gone. I want to I, I want to encourage you. Pray and ask, Lord, show me my Elam. Show me the place where I need to get to where I can be refreshed. Don't let a witchcraft spirit get inside of you that you want to start manipulating people uh, to suit your cause. Stay with the Lord. Amen? Amen? Praise the Lord. I pray that you receive something this morning. Amen. And I don't mean just that you understood it, but that you go out and you apply some of what God has said. That's the days we're living in. We're not living in where you hear good messages and you go and you say, oh, Pastor Zach preached this morning. It was good. No, this is for your life and to take action on. The reason why this word came from the Lord is because God cares for you and he want to let you know that the battle is the Lord's battle. Love you tremendously. Bless you in the name of Jesus. May the Lord hear your cry when you cry unto him and may he come to your rescue speedily. Amen. Love on somebody before you leave and just remember you're blessed to be a blessing.